Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Got something special for you today. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. It's been huge. Thank you for hitting a thousand subscribers back in December. My wife, I showed you one t-shirt she hooked me up with. This is the other one. This one I've been wanting for a while. Didn't know she knew I wanted it. She hooked me up. It's all good. The other one I liked a lot too, but I'd never even seen that other one, which was pretty cool too. So got a couple quick things. One, a little army man bottle opener the wife hooked me up for for Christmas. I'd said I would share if I'm drinking a commercial beer. Well, this is Winter Crew from Flying Fish, independent brewery. Just imagine Saison with winter spices. Really, really good beer. And I'm drinking it in my Muffin Top Brewing America glass. Today we're gonna to talk about a little bit of everything, but hydrometers. And I've got literally one, two, three, four, four, five, six. Six different hydrometers. And you probably go, six different hydrometers? Yeah, one's technically, I guess, not really a hydrometer, but kind of. So we're going to talk about all these different things. And I want to mention a couple of channels really quick. One, first, yes, this is a sponsored video, which is why I'm mentioning David Heath Brewing. David Heath Brewing, if you haven't checked it out, check him out. He's awesome. He will tell you right up front if it's sponsored, like I'm telling you, or not sponsored. I think, you know, we have the same morals, which uh, that's awesome. And he's also as non-biased as he can be, whether it's sponsored or not, which I love because I try to be as non-biased. And if I am biased on something, I will tell you straight up. Like if you're buying a computer and it's for business, I'm probably gonna tell you Intel. If you're buying it for personal, I'm biased. I'm gonna lean towards AMD. Just what I am and what I do, but I do tell you. So the other part is we know we got some people out there doing sponsored videos um, from a certain company that I'm not planning to work with anytime in the near future and don't care because I have someone similar that I like um, but yeah, most of the brew tubers who got sponsored say they were sponsored. There's a couple out there. Yeah, they're talking all about the product, but not a word. Didn't check the little box so it doesn't say it's sponsored. Just be aware when someone's, you know, flaunting aware and trying to get you to do something and talking about a product, they probably got hooked up. And no, they don't get bankrolled. They usually get hooked up with a couple nice items, um, things they can put to practical use and use in their brewing or whatever they may be doing. So, yeah. It could be ulterior motives there without actually being honest and telling you there's ulterior motives. Um, also, two of the hydrometers I had bought recently from Brewing America, yes, I purchased from Brewing America, was because of Short Circuit Brewing. You'd mentioned these during their holiday thing, and I, I don't go shopping all the time, totally bored. I go to a shop, I buy exactly what I'm looking for, and I check out and I'm gone. Well, he told me about two hydrometers I didn't know existed. And we'll talk about those in here. Um, one of them I'll have to bring over here and show you. But yeah, there's so many different types of hydrometers and some are really, really beneficial for different things. So without wasting any more time, I'm gonna jump right into this. And I already did the video originally with the giant cardboard box, but half my time was spent opening boxes. So I didn't wanna waste your time because I found that very boring. One of the reasons, I love Brewing America is one of the reasons I like my tilt. And keep in mind, I know you're like, well, why do you need a hydrometer if you got a tilt? My mom was from Missouri. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Florida boy, but I'm all about show me. I need to see it visually. And I'm an IT guy, network engineer by trade. I don't trust computers. <laughs> no, I don't. I use them to, as a tool, as an advantage, but I like to check and make sure things are correct. So my first tilt hydrometer I ever got, I put it in the water to calibrate it. And it told me the water was 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, what? I reached out to Tilt. That was back when you had to buy it directly at Tilt, and Tilt said, not a problem, got you taken care of. I sent it, they sent me another one. We were all good. The new one, I did some calibration. It was fine, no problem. Same thing with Brewing America. My first hydrometer I bought from them, I bought it knowing it was better quality than the cheap crap I had from wherever. And it seemed off. And I kept comparing it and it was definitely off. It was distilled water, you know, right temperature. They, no problem, took care of it right away. The theory I have, and I've always had this theory, is that no one is perfect. Everyone drops the ball from time to time. What matters is how they take care of you as a customer and making sure they make it right. I'm not looking for anything. I'm not looking for, you know, I just want what I want it to work. And if it was quality product, I'm sticking with that co company because like I said, everybody drops the ball. It happens. If you are perfect, wow, I'm sorry. In my world, no one is perfect. Everybody kind of screws up from time to time and I kind of laugh at it. Um, as I mentioned, I think in one of my videos, Robin Williams said, you know, 
it's easy to make fun of other people, but true humor is when you can make fun of yourself. And if I make someone laugh, I did my job that day. So it's all good. Not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna jump into a little bit of product. Then I'm gonna jump into something that is not a hydrometer, but it is so freaking cool. And it's like four cents a piece, which even cooler. So keep in mind, some of their stuff has lifetime warranty, some doesn't, but shipping I believe is free for almost everything. And before I jump into these infusers, just like hopefully you're out there watching videos, sometimes for entertainment, if I'm entertaining you, great. But if it's to learn something, cool. I'm always watching videos, I'm always reading, trying to learn more and more so that I understand what I'm doing and I learn things. Even if 99% of what they're telling me I've already heard, catch that 1%, that detail that I didn't know or I had forgotten, and that's huge. Recently, I've been watching Tim, the head brewer from Burial Beer Company up in Asheville, North Carolina. I've never met Tim, but awesome. Very smart, very smart man. He was talking about adjuncts, and I'm not talking about your chocolate malts. I'm talking adjuncts as in fruit, herbs, spices, plants, you name it. And in theory, yes, it could be like syrups and flavorings, Belgian candies, whatever you want to talk about. But he was talking about some that I never even knew. And then he was talking about some and the flavors that they give off that I didn't realize that could mimic another flavor that maybe wasn't as usable in beer. Amazing. So jumping into Brewing America, they have these things right here. And before I tell you about those, I'm going to get this stuff out of my way real quick. One 32 ounce coffee tumbler. It is a polar camel. My wife's like, Ooh, is that a Yeti? I go, no, it's better. I mean, this thing, yeah. Double wall, vacuum insulated. Supposedly it says can keep things cool for up to 24 hours. I would expect it to diminish over time, but yeah, this is going in my car whenever I'm heading somewhere. So very, very nice. Got room for a straw. If you like to drink out of a straw or sip, whatever you want to do, your adult sippy cup, you know what I mean? Coffee, whatever you want, BPA free, the whole nine yards. On these infusers, these caps matter. They're not just caps. I thought they were just caps. I'm like, why send me so many caps? They're, they're super cool. I explain. And to get one of the last little things out of the way, you've seen me, I make messes all the time. I use mason jars. I love mason jars. And as you may have seen, I do the spicy IPA pickles. I do the, I'm gonna do some hefeweizen and carrots. I'm dying to, I need to do it. I just haven't done it. And I even have lots of peppers I'm fermenting behind the scenes. You don't even see stuff I'm doing behind the scenes that I don't put on video where I'm learning to make different types of hot sauces and pepper sauces like a mango habanero, um, trying to mimic a thing called pirate sauce here in uh, Jacksonville from uh, Dick's Wings, which is a really good hot sauce. Yeah, it just is. But yeah, put it, you dump your stuff in. It's always easier to put it in a bigger hole and let it go down a smaller hole than it is to try to fit it in that hole and keep it in there. You know what I'm talking about? So. Two, because we all misplaced something. Okay, before we jump into that, well, yeah, you know what? We're gonna jump into it. Okay, so these infusers. A lot that does not meet the eye when you look at them. And when they mentioned they were sending me an infuser, I'm thinking that. Didn't know I was getting a mason jar. It's got a 32 ounce, got a 64 ounce. I've never even seen a 64 ounce mason jar. I think I have, but I think it was in an antique shop. So that's a 64 ounce, that's pretty cool. They don't sell them here locally. Not that I've seen, maybe in a craft store. Otherwise, I'd probably have to get something like that online, but that's still really cool. I have to think about that because it's glass and you know me, I'll break it. So this is a, I believe it's 150 or 160 micron. I want to say 160 micron, don't quote me. Stainless steel infuser, a lot like what we use for hops and kegs, except for these are 400 micron. So things get through. Very little is going to seep through this. This is designed to do like coffee, tea, things like that. But this can easily infuse things like kombucha, wines, beer. And that's one of the reasons I mentioned Tim. Tim does something that I've been considering for a while, and that's trying to infuse flavors directly into samples of your beer before putting it back into the beer and trying to avoid any kind of oxygen issues. But he says he gets a lot of flack from fellow brewers, professional brewers, you know, at other breweries about it. And he's like, but it works. It works so well. It just does. He goes, and that way I'm not adding all this water and all this stuff. And I've had a lot of burial beers. I've not tasted one bad burial beer. Bottom line, what he's doing, I'm good with. So you got a silicone seal, stainless steel. And this is where the lid is just super cool. 
And there's a video on how to get the little thing out easily without damaging it. But there's a silicone seal in here. Okay, and you're thinking, okay, yeah, so, okay, keep watching. Okay, we close that up. The lid. Let's say you put kabucha in here and you put some fruit to infuse it because you just want to see how it does with 32 ounces or whatever you put in here. The lid is double threaded, just like the top for anything that might be carbonated. So it doesn't just pop it open. Now, if you're dropping some beer that might have some yeast and you put something in here super sweet, I would at least open it once a day for a second. And keep in mind, any oxygen should be purged right away, but CO2 is heavy. So as long as you're not doing this or blowing into it, you're fine. But that's gonna seal it up. Seal it all the way. Shake it, build a little carbonation, no problem. Wouldn't, like I said, leave it. I don't know what the glass is rated at. It is a mason jar, so it's a really good quality glass. But you don't want to test trying to see what it takes to cause a mason jar to explode. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now this is the four cents a piece. I know you're going to go, eh, who cares? Let me explain again. They're two inch by one inch labels. You know, like labels? They're dissolvable labels. Yes, dissolvable labels. I haven't tested them with any kind of moisture, like the humidity that could be on a bottle from sweating. So I definitely need to test them. But even if you don't, and you have bottles that you're bottle conditioning that you don't put in the fridge and you're giving them out before they go into any fridge, that'll work too. Because once they're in there, they shouldn't be sweating unless they come out of the, and they're getting ready to be you know, enjoyed. But you put this on here, you can write what it is. You can write your ABV, you can whatever you want, write on a bunch of them, stick them on a bunch of bottles hand them out to friends, do whatever you want to do. All you have to do is put this under running water for about 30 seconds and the label just disintegrates completely. Just disintegrate. And I didn't say peels off. It disintegrates, dissolves in a nothingness. It's just gone. There's something there, but it's gone. So dissolvable labels. That is so freaking cool. They're like $10 for like 250. Dying to try those. Dying to try those. I know it sounds dumb, but those little tiny details like that, I just get excited about and I want to try it. So without further ado, we're going to go into the hydrometers because I know everybody's chomping at the bit on the hydrometers. So on the hydrometers, like I said, I'll put a link somewhere up here to brew in America on how to verify your hydrometer has been properly calibrated. Yes, I know some of you out there are going, calibrate it? Yes, and I'm not saying you're calibrating it. What I'm saying is that when it was designed, made, and manufactured, it met a certain criteria so that when you put in distilled water at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, your standard hydrometer read 1.000. Keep in mind, if your water's hotter, colder, that could be different. It might not be what you see. You may have to put an adjustment to compensate. Yeah, I know there's a couple of you out there right now going, I've never checked my hydrometer. I just assumed it was correct. Yeah, if you haven't seen my video about thermometers or where I mentioned my thermometer saying that it was off by 10 Fahrenheit for I don't know how many brews before I realized it when I first started brewing. Yeah, yeah. Check your hydrometer, make sure that it's calibrated correctly. If not, I guess in your head, you could always adjust for what it's off, but I would get one from a reputable company that you know is gonna take care of you and make sure you have quality product. So get a pro series from Brewing America and forget about it. I'll make sure I put links to their website and to Amazon. I know a lot of you out there only buy on Amazon. I've had people, hey, hey, would you have that same product on Amazon? I, I wanna buy it on Amazon or maybe you have gift certificates, I don't know. So let's go into the very first hydrometer. And the very first hydrometer, I, think I forgot to mention, I did. Some of these come with this. You saw I bought one, a replacement recently on this. These are, and this is something when you buy a kit, the bigger boxes are kits. They come with these and a cool scrub brush, and I'll show you. But these hydrometer reading tubes, speakers, lab, whatever you wanna call them, are made out of the same type of glass that Pyrex is made out of pretty much. A little thinner in some areas, a little thicker in others. Very durable, not shatter resistant, but very durable. I'm, beaten on my wife did break one but she dropped it on concrete from about what four feet five feet no, four 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 and a half feet it's called borosilicate or boro 3.3 glass it's awesome and you already know my pet peeve i don't like those plastic ones i don't like the garbage ones that are translucent not transparent where i can't see i want to be able to see through that thing and get a good reading if i didn't measure this properly to make sure that when i put my hydrometer in there it read right next to the top level 
I'm gonna put a link, like I said, to Brewing America, and he'll show you on different hydrometers how you can verify that it is properly calibrated. It works for other people's hydrometers too, not just Brewing America. So you can verify wherever you got yours is that it's working properly. So the first one, I call this the blind man or blind woman's hydrometer. And you can see, it's designed for beer brewing specifically. And the numbers are big and spread out. The whole hydrometer has been stretched and adjusted for that. So when you get a reading, it's a lot easier to read. A lot, you don't have to sit there and go, and like I do with a magnifying glass trying to count those things. Yeah, super easy. Blind man's hydrometer or for people like me, we'll say. So. I'm moving it out of the way so I don't break it. Number two. And this is a hydrometer that I honestly think everybody should have. This is your triple scale hydrometer. It has all three scales. It's your wine, your beer, your, your beer, and your mead. Everything right there. This is your foundation in brewing. You should have this. I don't care if you have a tilt, you have a refractometer, you should have one of these to verify and double check your readings. Make sure it's good before you trust any one device. This is, this is like a hold, uh, someone who digs ditches, this is their shovel. You've got to have it. Now these are kits. They're, they're hydrometers, but they include, like I mentioned, the cool tube, which these things are rated. I've seen where it says they go up to about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I've seen other ones say they're rated even higher, but it depends upon, you know, how thick and everything like that. I only need to go to 155 and I'll explain that in a minute on something I did mention in a previous video. And that was one of the items I learned from short circuit, which I did not know existed. You have a scrub brush. You got some information about other stuff that they have. A cleaning cloth, which I use for other things. Um, just all kinds of good things. It'll hook you up discount there. This is the same thing as that technically. It's a triple, and this is the, one of the items I ordered that I didn't know existed and Short Circuit at Brewing had mentioned. It's a triple hydrometer with a thermometer. So yes, when I go through and verify that these are all properly calibrated, I will verify that the thermometer is calibrated too. Because in the future, when I put this in, I can look to see what my temperature is in case I have to make an adjustment for the hydrometer reading based on the temperature of the wart. And yes, you, if you're measuring your wart and it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you think it's 1.070, it's probably not. It's probably something like 1.072 or something like that. No, don't quote me on that, but I should be pretty close. Okay. This is a distiller's hydrometer. So on one side, it goes to 100% alcohol. On the other side, it's up to 200 proof. If you didn't know, 80 proof is 40% alcohol. I know a lot of you already know that, but, but if you're doing any kind of distillation, um, distilling, this is your hydrometer. And if you're doing hand sanitizers from distilling, that's your hand sanitizer. That's your hand sanitizer. That's your hydrometer. Keep in mind, it doesn't work for rubbing alcohol. It's off by a few points. Um, but it will work for your whiskey, your vodka, whatever you're making. And I wish I would just sneeze because I've been fighting it for a while now. Second from last hydrometer. I'm going where? Yeah, second from last. This one may not be really a hydrometer, but it's designed very much like hydrometer. This is for measuring density of sugar syrups. You know, I guess like you could say your candy sugar or maple syrup. So it measures the density of the liquid. Something I need to check out. Like I said, I like to play with things I've never used before and learn how to actually use them. And then the last one, this is a hydrometer. And this hydrometer I purchased last month is designed for mashes at 155 Fahrenheit. So basically I can check and see what my gravity is at 155 Fahrenheit during the mash so that I can be a little bit more repeatable and get better at what I'm doing. Something I still need to, you know, do or use. And I reached out to Brewing America and that's kind of how all this started. And my question was, what can I put this in? I need a hundred, something that can tolerate 155 Fahrenheit. And instantly within 15 minutes on a late Sunday night, I get a reply, hey, you can put it in one of our tubes. 
they're rated for much higher. You're all good. Don't worry about it. You're set. Don't worry about it. So I'm just excited. I'm like, dude, I don't have to buy something else because I thought I was gonna have to buy something else, but I didn't. So that was very, very cool. And last but not least, I do have a little bonus item here, but if you've already seen it, you just don't know you've seen it. Deja vu. Look familiar? Unused, used. But this way you can kind of see Brewing America, Muffin Top. And on the bottom, it's a mountain with a little snow cap. It's got like three peaks and a snow cap for the nucleated part. So very cool glass, very, very cool glass. I did buy some glasses that were slightly similar, not as cool, a few months back. And if I drop one, I'd be a little annoyed. If I drop one of these, I'm gonna get very upset because I like these a lot. These are so far just hands down my favorite glasses. I didn't even think about it until I was reading about them after I had already been using them and enjoying them. They're designed for being able to hold on to them easier. They got something about the lip here. The it's, it's like the whole glass is behind science. It's like there was a lot of science behind building the glass and I'm very impressed. They do make them out without the word muffin top of Brewing America. If you don't want a brand on them, you can get them plain. Like I said, you can get them on their website or you can turn around and buy them on Amazon. If you know you have a gift certificate on Amazon, you want to take care of that, get yourself hooked up, whatever it may be. Thank you very much. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and here is to a great 2021 to everybody out there. Thank you.